Good day and welcome to another sermon. My name is Pastor Lawrence and today we are talking about the prodigal son. But let's pray first. Father, thank you today, Lord, that we can talk about this old story, the prodigal son. And Father, I pray that you will help us today to understand, Lord, how we are all prodigal sons and daughters, Lord, and how you are waiting for all of us, Lord. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Well, it's wonderful to be back with you today. And today we're talking about a very, very old story, the prodigal son. And I just want to start with um, this, that, you know, these old stories, you might think, oh, I've heard this a million times. I've heard uh, 1,000 sermons on this. But, you know, old stuff sometimes has a lot of value. Just uh, a few years ago, my wife and I went to South Africa to our parents' house. And when we stepped in, the house looked, um, you could really see it needed something. It needed some paint, you know, it needed some loving care. So what we did, we left the carpets. And the moment we left the carpets, we discovered this very, very old wooden floors. And um, very, very soon we started to rip the carpets out and we started to, you know, um, restore these old wooden floors. And just in a few weeks, um, that house looks perfectly new and so lovely up to this day. So today I'm going to lift the carpet on the story of the prodigal son. And I hope and believe and pray that for you and for me, um, it will have new value and it will bring us back unto the Father. Now let's start. We're going to start with his self-will that we read in verse 12. Let's read it. Luke 15 verse 12. And the, young, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Now the first problem that we see here is self-will. You know, self-will is the beginning of a fall. If you think about Adam and Eve, how they followed their own way in the garden. If you about, think about Samson, how he followed his own way, and Israel, how they always just wanted to do their own thing. Now, if you are only concerned with what you want and don't care what God wants, you are heading for a fall. Selfishness, in verse 13, we read about not long after that, the younger son packed up everything he owned and left for a foreign country where he wasted all his money in wild living. He was concerned with his freedom. He decided, okay, thanks for my inheritance. And more than that, a short while after that, he packed that all and he left. He doesn't want to be under his father's rule anymore. He decided, I will be on my own now. It's all about him. So he gathered all his belongings and left. Mark this, selfishness is always involved in a fall. Now, the next point, separation. Let's read about this in verse 13. Luke 15 verse 13. And not many days after the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with roads living, as far away from his father's rule as he could get. He took his stuff and he left. He wanted to be in control of his own life. Doesn't that sound familiar? A lot of us feel like that. We don't want God to say yes and no to everything we do. No, we, we want to do it our way. He left his father. How many of us will leave our Heavenly Father to follow our own ways and just, you know, go this and that and follow things that we love? The separation that existed was a result of the Son's actions, not the Father's. It is not our Heavenly Father that will throw us away. He will never do that. It is it is, it, is, it is our things, it's our life that move us into different directions. His actions brought about a separation. 
What in your life has brought the separation between you and the Lord up to this day? And I'm talking to myself. Mark this, self-will and selfishness will separate you from the Father sooner or later. And I can testify of this. I've seen stuff in my life that become more important than God. Brings a separation. And the wonderful thing is, is that when I left those things behind and repented and said, God, please take me back, He always does. God always takes me back, no matter what. Once you separate yourself from the Father, it's a downhill run straight into the arms of depravity. The moment you step out of the arms of your loving Father, it is a downhill battle. Sensuality, verse 13. Let's read Luke 15, verse 13. And not many days after the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riots living. Now the other versions in the CEV, it says wild living. In the ERV, it says living like a fool. The ESV says reckless living. And the NSB says loose living. It is just like the things of this world. Look so good. Look so inviting. Look so wonderful. But the end of that is away far from your father. Next, he ran into shortage. Sort verse 14. Luke 15, 14. Let's read it. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. A sinful lifestyle will always lead to, to shortage. If you think about all the rich and famous and, you know, their lifestyles with the Lamborghinis and the cars and the, the red carpets and the, and the airplanes and, you know, the private planes. But if you look into their eyes, you will find scarcity. You will see that there's most of the time nothing there because without the Lord, Without God, we cannot live a life of fullness. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The prodigal son was in a physical want. So many people don't even realize that, no, the money, the cash, the fame, whatever is not going to fill that void inside. There's only one piece, there's only one part um, only one thing that can fit into the void in our soul, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The prodigal son was in want, and it caused him to take action in the wrong direction. Self-abasement, verse 15. Let's read Luke 15, 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields, to feed swine. Next, there comes starvation. Verse 16. Luke 15, verse 16. Let's read. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. The King James Version is a little harder there. The ERV. He was so hungry that he wanted to eat the food of the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. The message says, he was so hungry, he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop, but no one would give him any. Physical story with a heavenly meaning, starving. Yes, this one time rich Jewish man, in a pig stay, eyeballing the pig slope for a meal. This is the lowest point of the story, the lowest point of this prodigal. The prodigal son starts his journey home from here. And this is the second point of this lesson, the ascent. Let's get started. The ascent, the realization in verse 17. Luke 15 verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? The boy came to himself. He realized his choices had led him to a place he did not want to be. When will you come to yourself? When will you realize, man, 
my life and what I'm doing is not leading me to the Lord. He realized the place he had come to versus the place he had once been, where as far apart as heaven and hell. He came to himself. He had not been himself. How long has it been that you've been yourself? I recently had this experience where I had to sit down with myself and say, stop this, stop this, leave this, leave this, and turn back unto the Lord. It was a wonderful experience. He had been beside himself, beneath himself, even below himself, beyond himself. Four of the greatest words in this story, he came to himself. What a beautiful place this is when you, when you just realize how far you've wandered from the Lord. And yes, it's a bad situation. It might be a bad story. But you know, if you realize that I've walked away, um, the good news is the Father is waiting for you. Before you will ever get out of the big state, you have to come to yourself. Realize where you are away from God lost. I had this experience where I just thought about the early years, how I knew the Lord personally and closely, and how over the years I drifted away and drifted away, and how I started to miss the Lord. Sometimes I would just walk you know, as I walk next to the river here where we live and I just feel I miss the Lord. And then I just start to sing a famous song that's in my mind, you know, like Old Rocket Cross or something. And then it's wonderful to feel the warmth of the Lord bubbling up again. Now the resolution comes in verse 18. Luke 15 verse 18. I will arise and go to my father. What a beautiful statement. First, you need to realize where you are, what you've become, what you've done, and how far it, it has taken you from the Lord. And then, don't let it drift you away. Don't like some people just say, oh, I'm too far off. There's no turning back. God will not accept me ever again. No, that's not true. You need to make that choice where you say, I will arise and go to my father. Why don't you say this with me today? Why don't you just for a moment say out loud, I will arise and go to my father. That's it. The, the, this is an open invitation. This story Jesus told. And he said, I'm telling you nothing but what I've seen my father do. So Jesus knew what he was talking about. This prodigal son makes a decision. I'm going home. My friend, it's time for you to make a decision to go home. <laughs> I'm smiling when I say this because I recently had this experience. Recently, I just came to myself and said, Where's my father? Where's my heavenly father? What have I become? What have I done? Where have I wandered off to? And then that warm feeling of, but just come home. It's that simple. It is not complicated. It's just accept our Father's grace and the invitation. Come home. He realized where he was at and he resolves to go home. Realize where you are today, my friends. Realize, I don't know what's going on in your life. I'm talking to you through my glasses, <laughs> through my own experience, where I realized, oh, I miss my father. I miss my Heavenly Father. He realizes that his Father is what he needs and where he needs to be. What a wonderful thing to realize, my friend, is when you come to your knees and realize, my Father, my Heavenly Father, is where I need, need to be. I remember I went through a time where I heard a lot of this and that, and you should pray like this, and you should read the Bible like this, and you should watch this and sing this and don't sing that. And then I through, through all these things and through all these things, I just say, Lord, I just want to be close to you in a very simple way. I don't even know how to pray always, but it's just 
just being with you. It's just like, just like sitting with your dad, sitting with your mom. And you may not had have had the best of moms or dads like 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 I had, but just sitting with them, just enjoying their love and fellowship. And one missed that, you know, one really missed that. I'm in a far off land like the prodigal son here in South Korea and recently back home. It was wonderful to just sit with my dad again and listen to him and sit with my mom again and just listen to her. And as I said this, what about our Heavenly Father? It will be wonderful to sit with, with him again. He realized there is a better place to be called home. <laughs> there definitely is a better place to be called home. So just recently they went to South Africa. That's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place to be with your mom and dad and to experience their love and the food and all the stuff. But anyways, I call it a resolution because it works best with my own outline. But the bottom line is he, he decides something. Being with my father is better. Being home is better. My friend, I think this is the most important part of the sermon. Is I ask you, why don't you take a decision right now? That it's better to being with your father. It's better to, to, to be back home. Take a moment and just decide that. Just decide it. It's not a feeling. It's not um, something, you know, like magic in the sky or, or stars or stuff. Um, you know, fireworks is just like that decision. It's better to be with your father. And I'm inviting you back. Like the prodigal son, I'm inviting you back through the sermon to your father. To any prodigal Christians here, God can't help you until you decided being with him is better. I also had to make that choice recently. Yes, I'm living with the Lord, but there's a lot of stuff in this life that can keep us busy, that can keep us away. But I had to, to make that decision from this day on. I want to be close with my father and all these other things need to be secondhand. God can't help you until you decide to go to him. The prodigal son resolves to return to his father. Here we have repentance. In verse 18 to 19 of Luke, let's read that I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto my father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Not only does he resolve to go home, he resolves what he is going to say to his father. As I just asked you to come back to the father, you made that decision. Yes, we think, but what am I going to say? How am I going to explain my sin? How am I going to explain walking away from the Lord? But notice, no excuses, errors, explanations. He, he resolved to say, I have sinned. He is willing to admit his sin, which means he has realized what he needed to realize. He sinned. He realized more than his big style situation. He realized his spiritual need and resolved to correct it in the only way he could. I will go to my father. I have sinned. I wish we could all come to this point today where you realize I will go to my father. I have sinned. Yes, you have sinned. Yes, you have you've 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 walked astray and I'm and me included. But let's go back to the Father. Let's just stand up from our our big place where we are at and walk back to the Father. One of the biggest problems in church is pride. You might be sitting here under this very sermon and think, but that's not me. I am holy, I'm this, I'm that. You're not. The Bible said we are all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all fallen into sin. Now let's look at the return. Verse 20, Luke 15, verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. He resolves to go home to his father and he does it. And that's what I want you to do. Yes, I hope you've taken, you've made this decision 
the ending the sermon to go back to the Father. But now, do it, okay? Not only decide, you also need to do it. The important point here is he doesn't care what others might think. He doesn't care about his big brother, the servants, the town, the district. All this is unimportant. All he cares about is getting back home to his father. For food? No, for forgiveness. What a beautiful invitation. Don't worry about what the church people might think. Don't care about what the what your family will think yeah he's doing it again he he tried this before yes yes we know we know no if you make that decision in your heart my friend let them think what they want you come back to the father if the prodigals in the church would quit worrying about what other people think the aisles would be full each sunday with repenting prodigals the thing is it doesn't matter what people think the main question is, what will the Lord think when we stand before Him in front of heaven's doors? What will He think? That is the most important thing. And that's why it is so Im important today to realize you've sinned, to realize that you've walked away and walked astray. But then secondly, make that choice to walk back to your Father now. While you're still alive, while you're still in this body, on this earth, where you can still make the right decision, so that one day when you're in front of Him, you know, you will be welcomed back because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at the reconciliation, verse 20. Luke 15, verse 20. And He arose and came to His Father. But then it was yet a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and run and fell on his neck and kissed him. He acted on his resolution. He went home. My friend, act, act. Just go home to your father. He repented. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Guess what? Guess who was waiting and watching? The father, the father was waiting. The father was watching. When will my son come back? Charles Hopeless preached a sermon called, Will God Run? The question is answered by the verse. Luke 15 verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran. His father ran to him, as you can see there, and fell on his neck and kissed him. Wow, this is beautiful. If the prodigal will come home, God will run. Well, you don't believe me. Look, look, look. As he was far off, um, his father saw him and had compassion and ran. It's not the prodigal son who ran, it's the father who ran to him and fell on his neck. The father fell on his neck. And kissed him. Isn't that beautiful? Your father is waiting for you, my friend. Your heavenly father is waiting for you. If the prodigal will come home, God will run. He will run with his heart, filled with compassion, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. We all need this. We all need compassion. We all need grace. We all need mercy and we need forgiveness. He will welcome you home. He will kiss you. How long have you been away from your father? He's watching this morning to see if, if you will come home. He will run to you and forgive you if you will. It is up to you. The invitation is clear, as clear as it can be today. Come back to your heavenly father. Reclothing, verse 22. Luke 15, verse 22. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. The prodigal is restored. A rope, a ring, and shoes. I have good news. God has a rope for you. You don't believe me? Well, Revelation 7, verse 9 and 10. Let's read. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kingdoms, and people and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white 
ropes they show rope my friend and and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our god which sat upon the throne and unto the lamb the new testament speaks of our wearing christ being found in him god wants to clothe you in righteousness the righteousness of his son this we read in philippians 3 verse 8 and 9 you're, you're doubtless, and I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You must be found in Christ, clothed with His righteousness, when you come home to the Father. That's it. When you have Jesus, when you have the blood, you are, you are more than perfect in the eyes of the Father. And He's waiting for you, rejoicing. Verse 23, 24, Luke 15, 23, 24, And bring hither the fattened calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. When the prodigal son come home, there was rejoicing. A celebration like you've never seen. Why? For this my son was dead, and it and is alive again. He was lost and is found. A lot of people do not realize how important they are to God. Do you realize how important you are to God? Just last week on the bus I forgot my pillow, and after the service I went back to the lost and found apartment. I found my pillow again. What a wonderful feeling that was and how much more are you in the lost and found section <laughs> we all are there's a father looking for us just like i looked for my pillow just um, and how happy i was to find a pillow how much more your heavenly father when you return to him you are so important that god hung his only begotten son on a cross allowed him to suffer bleed and die taking your sin upon himself just to get you home. That is the whole reason why the Father allowed this to his very own Son. When you come home, there is rejoicing. Luke 15, 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. There is a celebration in heaven today when you repent, when you decide to return to your father. The prodigal son came to his senses. The prodigal son came home. The prodigal son was received home. What about you? That's my invitation to you today. Just like my neck pillow that I lost and that I went looking for on the bus just a week ago. And I found it at the lost and found. You are like that neck pillow today. And I'm also we are lost, but let's just repent. As we've just read, let's say like the prodigal son, I will stand up and I will go back to my father. And I can guarantee you, even before you can, can start with, God, I'm sorry for this, I'm sorry for this. Just like in this story, the father will run. He will kiss you, he will hug you, he will just love you. And just throw his arms around you and say, welcome back. That's all that's needed. Why? Because he paid the price. Jesus paid the price. And we need to act on that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. That we could talk about this very old story of the prodigal son. And Father, as I read through these verses and shared my thoughts, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I could feel your love and warm and grace also in my heart. Because we are all prodigals. We all need to return to our Heavenly Father. And what a great um, truth this is, Lord, that you are waiting for all of us. Please help my friends. Please help us, Father, and including myself, to come back to one place. And that is to our Father. 
And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, from me, Pastor Lawrence, be blessed. I hope you will enjoy your time with your Heavenly Father. And I will see you next time. Goodbye and God bless.